Mistakes are good. Mistakes make us better. So let's talk about seven of my biggest mistakes in the reefing hobby. Everyone loves a good list. What's up, coral people? My name is Remy. If you're new here, welcome to the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. If at any point you're like, okay, I see what's going on here and I kind of like it and I would like to be notified when new videos come out. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell notification so you are notified whenever I post new videos. We can all go on this journey together. It'll be a great time. Today I wanted to talk about some of the biggest mistakes that I have made in the reefing hobby and what I've learned from those mistakes so that you don't have to go through the same thing. It's kind of like when you tell your kids not to do something, but then they do it anyway, so you're probably just gonna go ahead and do these things anyway, but then at the end, you'll be like, ah, <laughs> Remy from the Bahama Llama Coral Channel, he made this same mistake, I should've listened to his video, that was, um it was a poor choice on my part. I do wanna stress that we are dealing with living animals here. So if you do not have the means to take care of said animals, do not purchase the animal. Do a little bit of research, do your homework, and then once you've created a habitat for your animals to thrive in, then you can bring home the animal. I'm hoping that whether you're a rookie or you've been in the hobby for years, that you can take something away from this video today. So let's get right into it with number one, buying too much too fast. It is super easy to do this, especially when you're new in the hobby, you're eager to get some corals in your tank and you go to a frag swap and you get a great deal. You get like five frags for a hundred bucks or something like that. You get all these frags from different vendors. You spend a couple hundred bucks, you get 20 plus frags. You bring those home, you put them in your tank and then two weeks later, all of a sudden you've got flatworms and aptasia and all these pests that you don't want. Now I will say if you have a quarantine system, you can buy as many frags as you want at a frag swap and just kind of observe them over time. But if you're a newbie or an intermediate who doesn't have a quarantine tank and you need to put them in a display, well, then it becomes a little bit more difficult to get rid of those pests when they present themselves. And another drawback is when you buy too much too fast, you may not know exactly what you're getting. You might be at a frag swap or at the local fish store and you buy something that you kind of know a little bit about. Maybe it's an LPS that you kind of know a little bit about or an SPS, something that you're not totally sure of, but you just want to take a chance. Remember, back to the beginning, these are living animals. They're not to be experimented with. So do your research. Make sure not to impulse buy anything just because it's crazy cool looking or it's super cheap. Number two, thinking that your friends and family can maintain your reef tank while you're away. If you have the luxury of a local fish store or a local hobbyist, please, hire them have them come every other day to your house have them feed your tank refill your rodi if you need that make sure that you've got a professional doing the maintenance on your tank while you're on vacation two reasons for that i have never seen so much fear in my family members eyes just teaching them how to feed the tank now bless their hearts they don't want to mess anything up so they want to make sure they get it right but there's a lot of pressure because there's a lot of money in these tanks they just want to make sure they do it right so you can't blame them for getting super freaked out about just feeding the tank and number two you're going to disney world or you're going to mexico to lay on the beach you're not going to these places to worry about your tank while you're gone that said if there's an emergency and you've got a local fish store or a reef hobbyist that's local to you they will be able to handle your emergency a little bit easier than little Jimmy down the street who probably isn't feeding your stuff anyway because he's got better things to do like play Fortnite all day. Number three, thinking water changes will be enough. In the beginning, when you don't have a whole lot going on in your tank, they will be enough. You'll be able to get by with 20, 30, 40% water changes depending on your tank size, of course. But eventually when you fill up your tank with coral and you get it packed, it's going to catch up. So your corals will start consuming the alkalinity and the calcium and the magnesium faster than you can do a water change or it will need more than what a water change can provide. So what I do is I'm still doing bi-weekly water changes, but I've also got a dosing system. So the Fragmeyer has a dosing system. Right now the Lagoon doesn't have a dosing system because I'm not quite there yet. I'm close. 
And I think once I do start dosing that, it'll be like something like an all for reef or, you know, something that I can get by with a single head doser. I remember testing the alkalinity in my frag tank after a couple big runs of coral and putting 20, 30, 40 frags in there. And the alkalinity was sitting at four. So that brings me to my next point, not testing your water enough. You've probably heard this phrase. Um, I let my corals tell me what's going on in the tank. Well, personally, I've never met any corals that spoke, but maybe that's just me. Sure, if you've been in the hobby for a long time and you understand water chemistry and you kind of know when your corals are losing color, or not looking as good, maybe then you'll check your tank and see if your water parameters are a little funky. But for the most part, if you're a beginner, this is a great time to get into weekly or bi-weekly whenever you uh, change your water. Do some testing as well. Make sure that you know what's going on in your tank, especially if you're ramping up to get a dosing system, you'll wanna know the consumption of all three of those major elements on a daily basis. Now, calcium and magnesium aren't going to be as consumed per day, but you'll definitely be able to tell on that alkalinity what's going on in your tank. And if you've got HANA checkers, that makes it super easy and they're pretty accurate as well. You can also use like the Salifert kits or the Red Sea kits. Those take a little bit more time to mix and wait for the, the reagent to work. But the HANA checkers, oh my gosh, they're so easy and I love these so much. Number five, letting nuisance algae go too long. If you want an algae problem, dismiss it when you initially see it growing in your tank. It's inevitable, we're all going to have nuisance algae at some point. It's how are you going to manage it when it happens to you. Best advice I can give and what's worked for me over the years is to manually remove it when I initially see it and then figure out what's going on in the tank. Do you have a nutrient issue? Are your lights on too long? Things like that. Then you can start to troubleshoot what the water chemistry is doing to promote algae growth. Number six, dodging RODI flood disasters. Wanna flood your house? Accidentally leave your RODI unit on all night long. If you're watching this video and potentially making RODI water, you might wanna go check it so you don't flood your house. Both of the RODI units that I've had have been in the basement. Our first house was an unfinished basement and that got wet multiple times. This basement is totally finished and it's gotten into the carpet a couple times. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take care of this problem and I'm gonna get a float switch. While you shouldn't fully trust any of the flood prevention mechanisms that are available on the market, it does help with peace of mind. And oh my gosh, it's $12. Just get yourself one. It's probably the cheapest thing you're gonna buy in this hobby. Go get a float switch, and this is also a reminder to check your RODI water. Number seven, taking advice from too many sources. We talked about this at the beginning, right? Do your research, but where do you do the correct research? I'm gonna suggest the big players in this industry, Bulk Reef Supply. They put out an amazing series called the 52 Weeks of Reefing. They take you from the initial stages of a reef all the way through for a whole entire year and cover almost every single topic you can imagine to learn. So if you're a beginner, Bulk Reef Supply all the way. Mr. Saltwater Tank and his saltwateraquarium.com series is pretty good as well. Now mind you, all of these people have a vested interest in selling products. I'll let you use your judgment on that, but at the very basis of this, they want more people in the hobby so they can sell more products, so they want you to be successful. At the very least, just limit the amount of sources that you are getting your information from. If you go forum diving, that's on you, because the same heater that worked for this guy blew this guy's tank up, and Vibrant killed this guy's tank, but it made this guy's tank algae free. Every single product in this hobby is gonna have the crashing story and the success story, I promise you. So what's a big mistake that you've made in the hobby and you've learned from? It's okay to admit it in the comment section below. This is an open forum. We are all getting better from our mistakes. Why does every single YouTuber feel the need to like do this with their hands? It just feels so natural, it's like, I'm a ninja. Oh, let me show you something real quick. I just wanna pull this graphic up real quick. A lot of the reefing YouTube channels aren't gonna show you statistics on their YouTube channel because it's a reefing, so why would they? But I'm gonna show you this because I thought this was kind of interesting. So just about 80% of the views from my videos are coming from people that are not subscribed. So if you are a part of that small share of subscribers, 
Thank you so much. I appreciate you beyond measure. The love is felt, I promise. And if you like this video, you can subscribe, you can leave a comment in the comment section below with your biggest mistake. You can like, you can hit the bell notification so that you're notified whenever I upload new content. And by the way, I wasn't like telling you to work harder during this video. I'm just a Casey Neistat fanboy, and I bought this hoodie for way too much money. And uh, it just reminds me to work harder every day. And I just took my family to Frozen 2, which by the way, was amazing. Super deep, super complex, way more complex than the first one, let's be honest. Is there a voice calling me? Do I need to go? Do I have spiritual powers as well?